Hi everyone, it's Mr. H here, and this video is all about how to go from a velocity time graph to a position time graph by taking the area under a curve. So to go from a velocity time graph to a position time graph means you have to take the area under the curve, and we're going to see why here with the units in a moment. The key is to take each little bit one at a time. Now, that's not a curve, but it's straight line segments, but that's the same thing. That's what it means by the area under the curve, area under the straight line segments. And so what we're going to do is we're going to recognize that has two shapes under it. It has a rectangle and it has a triangle underneath it. So if we're calculating the area of the rectangular part of that, area is equal to length times the width. And so the length goes from zero meters per second north to two meters per second north. And so that's just a difference of two meters per second north. And so we're going to multiply that by the width, which is the time, which is two seconds. And so that rectangular section of the graph here is actually going to be four meters north. And you can see how the units cancel out to give you units of meters. Now, that's not the entire picture because we also need that triangular piece of it as well. So if we go to figure out the area of that triangular piece of it, we're going from two up to six. And so the base times height divided by two equation, which we use for any triangle, is taking a base that's two seconds wide zero to two seconds. The height is from two to six, so that's four meters per second, because the units on the velocity axis are meters per second north. And so the seconds are going to cancel again, and we're going to be dividing that by two, which again gives us four meters north. And so what that means is that the area from zero to two seconds is an area of eight meters total. And so that is what we're going to use for that first bit. But we're not going to graph it yet because we need an area under the entire curve first, so that we can set an appropriate scale on the position time graph. So now we're gonna look at that next segment going from two to four seconds, and then four to six seconds. Now what you can see is that's the same area as the rectangle we did to the left of it, but you could calculate that again if you wanted. Again, two meters per second times two seconds, it's an area of four meters. Same thing from four to six seconds, four meters again. And so now we go from six to eight seconds, we can see that that rectangular part below it is four meters, but then what do we do for the part above it? Well, you may have noticed that every single rectangle, little rectangle on this grid is actually two wide and one tall. So they're all exactly two meters in area. But if you have half of that, which that diagonal is at the top, it's only one meter. So that gives us a total area there under that six to eight seconds of five meters. Then we go from eight to 10 seconds. And again, we have every rectangle, little rectangle being two. And that last diagonal gives us half of that last two and so we have seven meters total for that next segment segment and then we go from 10 to 12 and we have eight meters because every rec little rectangle is two there's four of them that's eight meters now finally we end with this last bit and we have to figure out the area again here and that's going to be going from four down to one and the width is the base is two and then going from four to one gives us three as our height we divide by two and that gives us three meters again to the north and the little rectangle on the bottom is two meters. So that's a total under the curve of five meters. So now what we need to do is we need to find the total area because we need to, as I said, figure out the scale on the position time graph before we can actually graph this. Otherwise, it usually won't fit if we just use some scale that we just guess about. So we're adding up eight plus four plus four plus five plus seven plus eight plus five. And then when we add those all together, we get 41 meters total. And so we need to set a scale on the position time graph that fits all the way up to 41. And so the easiest way to do that is you take your 41 and you count how many ticks you have on your grid. There are seven ticks. And so what that means is 41 divided by seven gives me 5.85. And so I wanna get this scale as good as possible to fit as much data as possible. So I want something that's as close to 5.85 as possible, but more than 5.85. So I'm gonna go up by sixes here. And you can see that if I go up by sixes, it fits just nicely into this scale. And so 42 is the top end, but my highest number is 41. So that's perfect. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to graph from zero to two seconds. And I'm just going to also make sure that my time is lined up with the time below. And from zero to two seconds, we have eight meters. So at two seconds, we have traveled eight meters in total, starting at zero after two seconds, eight meters in total. Well, eight meters is a third of the way between six and 12. So we're gonna put a dot right there at two seconds. And then two seconds later, we've traveled four meters further, which means that if we were at eight, that means four meters further puts us at 12. And so at four seconds, that's 12. 
We've traveled four meters further at six seconds, and so now we are at 16, which is two thirds of the way between 12 and 18. Then we go from six to eight, where we travel five meters further still, and so that 16 plus five will give me 21. So I'm gonna make that mark, and that's actually gonna be smack in between 18 and 24. So there's your 21. And then seven meters further still is 21 plus seven is 28. And I plot that according to my scale, which is two thirds of the way between 24 and 30. And then eight meters further still at 12 seconds. So 28 plus eight is 36. And then five meters more at 14 seconds, which gives me 41. And so now it might be tricky now to say, okay, where are straight lines between these and where are curved lines? And so we look at the uh, at the line on the velocity time graph, and we can see that the velocity is decreasing from zero to two. That means it's slowing down. And so on a position time graph, that means a curve is starting really fast and getting less and less steep over time. Then we have this segment from two to six seconds where the velocity is constant velocity. On a position time graph, that means it is a straight line from eight, uh, from two to six seconds and from uh, eight meters to 16 meters. Then from six to 10, we can see that it is speeding up. The velocity on the velocity time graph is getting bigger and bigger. And so if it's speeding up, the position time graph is a curve that curves upwards like so. And then from 10 to 12 seconds, it's going at a constant velocity again. So just like before, we have a straight line. And then as we can see from the velocity time graph, 12 to 14 seconds, it's slowing down. The velocity is getting lower and lower according to that graph. So that means that it would be a curve that would go just like we had initially on this graph for the last two seconds as well. And so just to point out here that those two segments are the constant velocity segments. And what that means is that those are the uniform motion segments as well. We refer to that as uniform motion, unchanging motion. So there's my labeling of position on my y-axis. It's in meters north, just like velocity was also north. So it's also in that same direction. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. There's a video about velocity time to acceleration time on the right, on the left, or some more physics videos. Thanks so much for watching.